Welcome back, everybody. We are taking another deep dive today, and we are tackling one of the most iconic heroes in all of comics, Batman. And wow. Um, really digging into it this time. Yeah, yeah, we've got these incredibly detailed descriptions to go off of. Like we're talking everything from his his psychological profile to, to like a full inventory of utility belt. It's really remarkable how much there is to unpack. And what I find fascinating is how these sources go beyond just listing facts and actually delve into, well, into the psychology of Batman. What makes him tick? You know, how does this guy who dresses like a bat and operates in the shadows, how does he become such an enduring symbol of hope? It's kind of mind blowing, right? Like one minute they're listing off 127 martial arts that he's mastered 127. Who even knew there were that many? And the next, they're breaking down the psychological impact of his apparent death and how that trauma shaped him, but didn't break him. Absolutely. And that's that's really the crux of it, isn't it? That singular event, the loss of his parents, it serves as this this catalyst for everything that comes after. Both sources really emphasize that point. You know, they highlight the the profound psychological impact of that trauma on on young Bruce. It's interesting because, you know, you think that an experience like that at such a young age would be paralyzing. But the sources we have actually suggest that it kind of galvanizes him. It gives him this the singular focus. Exactly. And that's where things get really fascinating. Instead of being consumed by his pain, by that loss, he channels it. He makes a conscious choice to to turn that pain into a, into a mission, this vow to fight injustice, to make sure that what happened to him, to his family, never happens to anyone else. Okay, but, but he could have chosen any path, right? Yeah. Why become, I mean, essentially a creature of the night? Why use fear as a weapon, as one of these sources puts it? It seems like... Uh, Seems kind of dark, doesn't it? It's all about understanding the criminal mind. You see, as one of our sources points out, criminals, they thrive on fear, superstition. Batman, he understands this, and he uses it to his advantage. He becomes this symbol of terror, preying on those primal instincts. You mentioned earlier how these sources analyze his methods. Could you elaborate on that a bit? I mean, how does he actually, like, practically, how does he go about weaponizing fear? It's incredibly calculated, every aspect of it. Take his costume, for example. It's not just about hiding his identity. It's designed to evoke fear, to tap into those deep-seated anxieties we all have about the dark, the unknown. So he's not just fighting crime. He's he's almost waging psychological warfare. Precisely. Yeah. And it's not just about brute force either. Both sources we have here really emphasize Batman's mastery of stealth and intimidation. He appears as if from nowhere, vanishes just as quickly. He understands the power of suggestion. That reminds me, there was this one line in... I think it's the second source, something like, he must be a creature of the night, striking terror into the hearts of criminals. <laughs> like, he's he's almost become this, this living urban legend. Exactly. And that plays into the criminal underworld's, shall we say, tendency towards superstition. They don't just fear Batman the man, they fear what he represents. This, this unknowable force fighting back against the shadows. It's interesting, though, because for all this talk of fear and intimidation, it's important to remember that Batman, he has this very strict no-kill rule. The sources, they make that very clear. Right. And that's that's a crucial distinction, because despite his methods, despite the darkness he embodies, there's a line he won't cross. He understands that to kill, to take a life, would be to become the very thing he's fighting against. So we've got this incredibly driven, psychologically complex hero with an arsenal of well, everything, really. But but the sources also go deep on how he's evolved over time. There's this whole thing about a golden age, a silver age. He's like he's gone through these different iterations, these transformations. He has. And those transformations, they're really fascinating because they reflect not only the evolution of, of comics as a medium, but also the change in cultural landscape. What was considered, you know, heroic in the 1940s, it's different from what we expect from our heroes today. Right. Like in those early Golden Age comics, Batman was going up against villains like Dr. Death, Professor Hugo Strange. Right. Villains that were very much a product of their time, a bit pulpier, you know, more grounded in that kind of weird science aesthetic. He even got engaged for a hot minute there. He did. Can you imagine? Batman, domesticated. But it shows you, even then, he was evolving. Not exactly the brooding loner we know and, uh, well, some people love today. Exactly. But then as we move into the Silver and Bronze Ages, things begin to shift. You see more fantastical elements introduced, the formation of the Bat family. Yeah. The sources mention Batwoman, Ace the Bat Hound. He becomes a father figure to Robin, of course. All of that speaks to a different aspect of the character. His capacity for connection, for building a surrogate family, finding a way 
to, well, to not be alone in his fight. And let's not forget, this is also when he starts to, like, really team up with other heroes. He joins the Justice League, starts working alongside Superman and Wonder Woman. Which I think demonstrates his adaptability. He recognizes that some battles, some threats, they require collaboration. Even for someone who, let's face it, often prefers to work alone. Makes you wonder how that dynamic works. Right. But we can talk about that more a little later. For now, let's... um. Let's get back to this idea of Batman's evolution, because then there's this dark age that gets mentioned. What was that about? Was it just like a change in tone or was it something more? Well, it was definitely a shift. Things got grittier, more morally ambiguous. It reflected a broader trend in comics at the time. And Batman, with his already, let's say, complex relationship with darkness, he was the perfect vehicle for exploring those themes. And some of the storylines from that period had a huge impact. The sources specifically called out Year One and A Death in the Family. And for good reason. Year One gave us this incredibly grounded, realistic take on his origin story while A Death in the Family. Well, it showed us just how far he could be pushed, how even Batman, even someone so in control, could be deeply affected by loss and grief. And how he comes back from that, how he copes, that's what makes those stories so powerful. And this is just the beginning. We haven't even gotten into his insane rogues gallery the time he traveled through time, or the event known as Nightfall. We've got a lot more ground to cover, that's for sure. But I think what's already clear is just how adaptable, how multifaceted Batman is as a character. He's a reflection of our anxieties, our hopes, our fears. He's a mirror to our own humanity. He's definitely more than just a guy in a bat costume. Speaking of which... The sources go into a ridiculous amount of detail about his skills and gadgets. Honestly, it's kind of overwhelming just going through this list of everything he's mastered. He is the very definition of peak human performance. Right. One of these sources mentions him being at peak human potential in practically every category. And what's truly remarkable is the sheer dedication required to reach that level. Yeah, it's not just... Like, oh, he's naturally gifted, end of story. This is years, decades even, of relentless training, of pushing himself beyond his limits. Like, you can bench press a car, okay, impressive, but then you read on and it's like, oh yeah, he can also out-strategize a supercomputer while simultaneously deciphering ancient Sumerian cuneiform. As one source puts it, Batman has honed his mind and body into the ultimate weapon. So, so it's more than just the what, right? It's the why. Exactly. What drives someone to push themselves that hard? It goes back to that core mission, that vow he made to fight injustice, to never let what happened to him happen to anyone else. But it's, it's got to go beyond that, right? I mean, most people, even after experiencing something horrific, they don't dedicate their lives to becoming, like, the ultimate human weapon. He understands that the threats he faces, the forces of chaos and corruption he's up against, they require a different kind of response. So it's not just about vengeance. It's about preparedness. Precisely. He has to be ready for anything. Which leads to, well, some pretty interesting scenarios. One of the sources describes a case where Batman had to track down a criminal who was using this experimental sonar device. Yeah, I remember reading that. To counter it, Batman didn't just have to invent a device capable of blocking the sonar waves. He also had to master echolocation techniques. Like a like a bat. Exactly. It's like, okay, how many PhDs does this guy need? But it illustrates how he combines his intellect, his detective skills, his understanding of technology, all in the pursuit of justice. Speaking of technology, uh, we can't forget about, well, all the toys, right? Ah, uh, yes. The Batmobile, the Batarangs. The Bat-themed boomerang. Don't forget that one. The Batarangarang, as I believe it was once called. I mean, at some point, you got to figure they were just having fun coming up with those names. Perhaps. But in all seriousness, the technology Batman employs is a key part of his persona. It allows them to operate at peak efficiency. And even the odds against, let's face it, some pretty physically superior opponents. Indeed. But, but it begs the question, is it the gadgets that make Batman, or is it Batman who makes the gadgets? That's an excellent question, and I think the answer is, in a way, both. Okay, how so? Yes, he has access to technology that most people can only dream of. But it's his intellect, his strategic mind, that allows him to utilize that technology effectively. He's not just swinging from rooftops and throwing punches. He's using his understanding of physics, engineering, even psychology. Precisely. He understands how fear works, how people react under pressure. He uses that knowledge to his advantage. One of the sources pointed out that even his cape, which, let's be honest, seems like a purely stylistic choice. 
is actually a carefully designed gliding mechanism, allowing him to control his descent, to maneuver through the air with incredible precision. It's like every detail, no matter how small, has been thought through, analyzed, optimized. And that, I think, is what makes Batman so compelling. He is the ultimate example of human potential pushed to its absolute limit. He's not an alien. He wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider. He's just a man. Who chose to make himself into something more. And yet for all his skills, for all the gadgets in the armor, he still relies, in the end, on human connection. Both sources make it very clear. His relationships with Alfred and Commissioner Gordon are not just plot devices. They're fundamental to who Batman is. It's an interesting contrast, isn't it? How so? Well, you have Batman, this creature of the night, operating in the shadows, shrouded in secrecy. And on the other side, you have Alfred. Right. Alfred, this constant source of warmth, of wisdom, of, uh, dare I say, unconditional love. He is the rock, the anchor that keeps Batman grounded. And then there's Gordon, who represents, in a way, the best of what Gotham can be. He is the incorruptible cop. The one who still believes in justice, even in the face of overwhelming odds. And both relationships, they highlight the importance of trust. Even for someone as seemingly self-reliant as Batman. He needs Alfred's guidance, his unwavering support, to function. And his partnership with Gordon, it demonstrates that even Batman, even a lone wolf like him, can't operate entirely alone. He needs allies, people within the system who share his vision, his unwavering commitment to justice. Which makes me wonder, how does that translate to his role in the Justice League? Right. We're talking about a man who, for the most part, operates in the shadows, surrounded by beings of almost unimaginable power. Superman, Wonder Woman. Exactly. Gods among men, some might say. What role does someone like Batman play in that dynamic? It really makes you think, you know, maybe you don't need superpowers to be a superhero. He's proof that human potential, it's a powerful thing. Yeah, like... He didn't win the genetic lottery. He wasn't struck by lightning. He just... He made a choice. He dedicated himself to this... this To becoming the best version of himself, even if that version meant embracing the darkness, confronting the shadows head on. It's inspiring in a way, isn't it? It is. It's a reminder that we all have the potential for greatness within us. Even if our idea of greatness doesn't involve, you know gargoyles and grappling hooks. Precisely. But the core principle, the dedication to a cause, the unwavering commitment to something larger than ourselves. That's something we can all aspire to. Absolutely. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Origins, methods, relationships, that whole evolution over the years. Batman's journey is a long and winding one. It really is. But as we uh, as we start to wrap up this deep dive, I'm curious, what would you say is the, the key takeaway? What makes Batman, after all this time, all these different iterations, still feel so relevant? It's that timeless appeal of hope triumphing over adversity. That even in the face of overwhelming darkness, even when surrounded by chaos and corruption, one person can make a difference. He's a symbol, really. Exactly. Not just a fear for the criminals he hunts, but of hope for the citizens of Gotham. And for us, the readers. He embodies this idea that we don't have to accept the world as it is, that we can fight for something better. That we can all be agents of change, no matter how small our actions may seem. And maybe that's why he's endured for so long. Because that message, that need for hope, it never really goes away. And Batman, he's a reflection of that need. He evolves with us, reflects our anxieties, our fears, but also our aspirations. He's been reinterpreted, reinvented, reimagined countless times over the decades. And yet those core elements, the tragedy, the determination, the unwavering moral code, they remain. Which I think speaks to the power of a well-crafted character. Absolutely. Know. Batman is more than just a superhero. He's an icon, a symbol of human resilience in the face of overwhelming odds. I have to say, I always walk away from these deep dives feeling like I've learned something new. It's been a pleasure exploring these sources with you. The pleasure was all mine. And a huge thank you to everyone listening. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Batman, so be sure to leave a comment below and let us know what you think. What are some of your favorite interpretations? Any storylines you think we missed? And before we go, one final thought to ponder. Oh, you know, I love a good cliffhanger. We've talked a lot about Batman's world, his Gotham, but... How would he fare in our own? Could someone with his resources, his unwavering dedication, could he truly make a difference in the real world? Or is he ultimately a product of fiction? A symbol of what we wish were possible, but maybe, just maybe, a little out of reach for us mere mortals. Food for thought, wouldn't you say? Definitely. It's something to chew on. 
Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and remember, even in the darkest nights, there's always a glimmer of hope, a bat signal in the sky, if you will, reminding us that we're not alone.